In this video, I will be showing you a good PWM motor controller, pulse width modulated motor controller. I have also used this circuit with incandescent lamps and LEDs. You have full brightness control of the incandescent lamp and the LEDs. And you also have full speed control over any DC motor you would like to control. Now the load that this particular PWM circuit can control is determined by the current rating of the MOSFET. If you use an IRF3205 or a Z44N, you can handle a lot of current. You can more than likely even control a trolling motor on a boat. You also have to make sure that the wires can supply the current to the MOSFET and that the power supply can also handle the current. So it's three factors, the power supply, the wires, and the MOSFET. The circuit is based on an LM324. It's a quad op amp. There's four operational amplifiers inside this one chip. The schematic is pretty simple. This is just your power supply section right here. Over here is a voltage divider. Then you have another voltage divider here, which is used to adjust the pulse width. This capacitor right here, C1, is an important capacitor. It is used to adjust the frequency of the circuit. Now, it's very important that if your motor is jittery or it's not running properly using the pulse width modulation from this circuit, you can adjust the value of this capacitor higher or lower to change the frequency at which the circuit operates. So keep that in mind if you're having any issues with your performance of your motor being controlled by this circuit. And over here I have the, in my case I use an IRF640, I had a whole bunch of those laying around. I use a 200 ohm resistor feeding the gate of the MOSFET. And I also added a 24 volt TVS, transient voltage suppressing diode, across the MOSFET to help protect the MOSFET. Now a lot of these have a diode in them already to protect them, but I like to add an extra one just to be safe since we're using an inductive load. Now when you're choosing a MOSFET, Look for one that has the lowest RDS, and that is the lowest amount of resistance between the drain and the source when the MOSFET is turned on. So you'll have less of a voltage drop, and you'll have less heating because there's less resistance. Now, the one I'm using is a 0.18. You can use a lot of other ones that go down to like 0.04 or 0.01. So there are many out there to choose from. The IRF Z44N is a low one. The IRF3205, that's like 100 amps. So there are plenty of different MOSFETs that you can choose when you put together this circuit. Now this is what mine looks like right here. Not much to it. You really don't need a huge heat sink. It doesn't really get hot, it gets a little warm, even under a heavy load that I tried. I tested this using a headlamp from my scooter and that was around four, four and a half amps and I dimmed it all the way down and brought it back up and this only got a little warm and I tried a starter motor which was really heavy duty and it was just warm it didn't get hot at all so you can control a lot of different things with the circuit the frequency is highly adjustable right now I'm going to show you using around a hundred Hertz but you can go way up I've experimented with different capacitor values all the way up to 13 and a half kilohertz so you just keep playing around with this value and you could probe the gate to the MOSFET and you'll see exactly what the frequency is if you take a reading right here or you can also take a reading with the load connected at the drain so you can check it there too to see what the frequency is now in this video I'm also going to show you what the PWM looks like on my scope this way you get a better idea of how this works so let's get started now I'm going to explain exactly how this works and what it looks like on the scope and you'll have a better understanding what I mean that even though the motor is going slower and the light is dimming that the MOSFET is still fully on or fully off. So let me turn on my power supply. Alright, that, that, that's on. Now I already have the probe from my oscilloscope connected to the gate of the MOSFET. I hope you can see this fairly clearly. 
What I'm going to do is on the circuit board, I'm going to take my Phillips screwdriver and adjust the potentiometer while you're looking at the scope. Now right here, you can see each one of these pulses shooting up. This line here at the bottom is when this MOSFET is turned off and there is no power to the gate. When you see this line shoot up right here, that is when the MOSFET is turning on. So once the MOSFET goes on, then there's a duration of how long it actually stays on, and that is the horizontal line at the top that you're looking at. And then what happens? The power goes off, and now the MOSFET's back off again until it turns on again, and then you have that short duration. So you're having all these pulses occur at a high frequency. This is very similar to taking a wire from a 12-volt battery and connecting a bulb like this up to it and you're tapping the wire really really fast. Every time you tap it the light comes on. So if you can adjust the duration of the tapping and how long it stays on you're going to adjust the brightness of this bulb. So the longer that the MOSFET stays on the more power you're going to have to the motor the faster it's going to spin and the brighter your light is going to be. The more that it's off like right now the way it is the slower the motor is going to be and the dimmer the, the light bulb is going to be or whatever else you're going to control. As you can see here it's around 94 95 Hertz so the cycle is the beginning of this pulse to the beginning of the next pulse. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to adjust the PWM. You're going to see that the frequency is staying the same. There's these little grid lines here very hard to see on this with the glare but you'll see there's a dotted line going down here and another one going down here. You're going to see that the beginning of the pulses are going to stay exactly where they're supposed to be on those lines. The frequency is not going to change. What's going to change is the on time duration. So you're going to see this grow, this top line right here on all of them. So let me demonstrate that for you right now. I'm going to slowly rotate the potentiometer and you can see and you can see it's getting wider. And wider. So right now your motor will be going faster and faster because the MOSFET is on. Right now the MOSFET is on half the time. The top part of the on is just a hair wider than the bottom part. So it's on slightly more than it is off you would probably be running the motor around 55 percent of its speed and the light would be on a little more than half the brightness so I'm going to continue to go higher with that and eventually you keep turning it so right now the way it's set up you can see it's off only momentarily and it's on probably 85 percent of the time the motor is going to be pretty fast right now the way this is set and the lamp that you're controlling will be fairly bright. I'm going to turn it a little higher. And now you can see it's that is now fully on and you'll be running at full speed. And I rotate backwards and you can see I'm adjusting that pulse. The MOSFET's going to be on less and less and it's going to be off more and more. Now I have mine set that that's the lowest it goes because I have no need for a motor to be at a crawl or a bulb that's going to be only slightly on. To me that's a waste. So I adjusted it to that part there, what you see. And it's easy to adjust if you would like to have this go all the way off. You would adjust that to have it go completely off if you wanted it. This part of the circuit here, this voltage divider with the potentiometer, you can adjust the values, maybe make this a 250K, make this 100, play around with these values and you'll adjust the pulse width and then you should be able to have it go completely off if you want it to go completely off. Once you adjust those values then you can have the pulses that you see here become a flat line along the bottom if that's what you desire. So there's plenty you could do with this, just play around with it. Let me connect the motor and show you how it works. Right now it's going to be set for the highest speed. Alright, so now the motor is running. What I'm going to do now 
is slowly rotate the potentiometer to adjust the pulse width. And that's what the scope looks like. Flat line across the top, that means it's on all the time. Let's go back here. I'm going to adjust And you can see that. All right. Running slower. And this right here is fine, it's cold. Now, if the lowest I could put it would be right here. All right, now that's pretty slow. I don't want to go any slower than that because what am I going to do with it? <laughs> and that's what the scope looks like. That's the scope right there, the small pulses. Let's bring it up. There you go, full speed. And we'll be back down. So it certainly works well. Let me show you using an incandescent lamp that draws around a little over half of an amp. All right, this is with the bulb connected. That's full brightness. I'm going to reach right in front of the camera here and slowly start dim it down. And this is the same thing. I didn't want this getting too dim. Turn it way down, down, and to there. So that's fairly low. I mean, any lower than the filament's just going to be barely glowing. And I can turn it back up again. Nice and bright all the way up. Right to there's full brightness. And that's about it. Give it a try. The link will be in the video description area. Don't forget to also check out my video playlist. I have lots of other interesting videos and very useful ones. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please rate it a thumbs up. Subscribe and post links to my videos on other websites and blogs. Thank you very much.